Welcome to Farm Connections with your host, Dan Hoffman. Sometimes we may cringe at the cold weather here in Minnesota, but without it, we wouldn't have one of the best treats at the breakfast table, maple syrup. Let's learn more about how maple syrup is harvested from the folks at Herring Maple Syrup in Waterville, Minnesota. With me in the woods today is Tyler Herring. Tyler, this is really an honor to be visiting with you. Your family does a nice business with maple syrup. Yep. Yeah, the syrup, uh, our family has been in it for many years, it's ever since 1895. And um, my great grandpa did it with his, with my great grandpa, and my grandpa did it, and it's just kept on getting passed down on the years, and um, it also has grown bigger and bigger as well. We used to be out in the woods with flat pans and buckets only, and now we got uh, diesel-fired evaporators with uh, high pressure vacuum lines. So it's, it's really developed over the years, big time, more efficient. What do you think Grandpa would say? 120 years ago he started this. What would he say if he saw your operation today? I, I would say he wouldn't believe what he's seeing, more or less. It's, it's something out of the ordinary. Not many people even know of it or have ever heard of it. And a lot of people out there don't even know what, uh, what the real syrup is. They think they're drinking Aunt Jemima's and it's real, it's really not. It's, it's just caramel flavoring and uh, caramel coloring and maple flavoring. And that's about it, a little corn syrup. And your family at Herring doesn't do anything like that. You, you have the real product. This is natural sugar right out of the tree, everything. It's, it's the real deal, it's maple syrup. When Grandpa started in 1895, did he envision a commercial business or did he do it for no, some other? No, he just did it for like uh, locals, his neighbors, you know, a couple farmers around him. That was about it. It was just a hobby, a deal. When, when did your family decide to turn it into a bit of a commercial or farming business? Uh, about four years ago, three or four years ago. We, uh, well, actually five years ago, I'd say. We started tapping more and more, and then it got to be where we had so much bulk syrup that you couldn't give it to all your neighbors and everybody, you know, and we, there is a market for it, we noticed, and we've heard about it, and uh, we started just selling it at the farmer's market, my grandparents did, and us kids, and before you know it, we put more taps in, and now we're trying to sell it in stores and uh, online, and it's getting out there ways then. Nice. Yeah. Well, you talked a little bit about the taps. Tell us about the process and what a tap is and um, what it does. Well, when we used to do like a bucket taps, it was 7 16 size hole, and it was a lot larger, and they didn't heal up as well. And um, the thing with buckets as well is having the bigger tap and everything, and it's exposed to the elements. It's mm -hmm. not plugged off by a line like we use nowadays. And um, the bacteria gets in there, and the hole will seal up earlier, and you won't get as much sap. So your yield will go down as well. See, with the new equipment, it's 7 16 a lot smaller. We're actually thinking about going to quarter next year. So the smaller the hole, the less damage you do to the tree. It heals faster and also with pipe, no fresh air and bacteria gets in there. So Tyler, you started this process probably well before today oh, yeah. when there was snow on the ground. Yep. You looked around for some trees. How did, how did you identify what to tap? Um, the maple trees, uh, you know, it's, it's come to be instinct almost. I can walk through the woods. I don't have to look for a leaf. I don't have to, I, I can look at the base of the tree and know it's a maple. We've been doing it for so long. It's, uh, it's, it's more or less, uh, you've done it so long, an instinct, you're always around the maple trees. You know, you just know what to tap and what's not good. There's several things that you can pick out. Like on a maple tree, the bark, younger ones are a lot smoother and they all, usually have white blotchy spots on them because there ain't no leaves in the winter when we're tapping. You know, we got lines going to them, but still, if you were to run through the woods and tap the trees, you wouldn't be able to know because there's no leaves, but you gotta look at the, the features the tree has. This is the bark, color of the bark, and then sometimes like the base of a tree. A base of a maple, you won't have shoots ever coming off of it. It's just its own tree. There'll never be any junk on the bottom. You looked for a certain size of tree? Uh, typically, uh, no, but it, you know, we, got, we have a certain size we won't tap. It's just too small. Um, we'll start at like uh, at least six, seven inches in diameter across or radius across. And um, you get uh, 18 inches, that is two taps. And if you can't wrap your arms around the tree, that's three taps. Otherwise, you won't go any more than that. You leave the taps in all winter? Yeah, uh, the taps aren't in all winter. They're usually tapped probably about two weeks before the season. And then uh, we, we pull them out right after the season's done. 
And so you come back to the same woods the following year. Yep. Where do you put the tap? In the same hole? No, we don't. You have to, it has to be at least three, three to five inches away from the old tap, and it can't be straight above or straight below it. Why? And it's because if you tap that tree right there straight below it, sometimes you'll tend to get a leak. And every time I get a leak from the old hole leaking, uh, healing, that brings down my PSI in my pump house. And if I'm not pulling what I need in there, I'll lose so many gallons per an hour and it'll hurt my yield. We talk a lot about yield. You really sound like a farmer, which yeah. is a great thing. What else affects that yield? Is temperature um, and weather? It's the temperature, it's all weather pending, just like farming. If you get you know, a huge rain, except for that for maple syrup, if you get a big rain or big snow, it's good. You know, if you, you don't want a big flood when you're farming it either, but there ain't such thing as that out in the woods. The more moisture, the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. And uh, frost is a big thing. If your frost goes real deep like it did last year, it hurts us because the frost takes so long to come out. See, the frost comes out bottom up. It doesn't come, come out top out, down. The more snow you got, that helps. See, the frost won't go as deep. But when you got a lot of frost, see, like last year, the trees, they didn't even start to run until it got so hot to where my sap spoiled. Hmm. So you've tapped, you found a tree, you've tapped it, you've put in a line, then what happens? I'll tell you how it goes from scratch. When you're, running, when you're gonna do a woods, you go out and you walk the woods and you can see all the natural funnel points where everything's gonna flow to. Sometimes it helps to have a creek in the woods. The majority of my woods actually do have a creek in them. And um, we'll flag it, we use a laser or eye level, and you flag all the big pipe. And there's actually uh, several different sizes of pipe. Our 5 16 goes tree to tree, and then from the tree to the pipe going the lateral lines up and down the hills, that's inch lines. And that runs down to your main lines. So how many acres do you have underneath production? I would say about five, 600 acres we have of oh. all maple trees. Oh, yeah. five or 600 acres, do you own it all? No, we don't. We, uh, we, we lease, we rent. It depends on, every wood is different. And how many taps? Uh, about 33,000. Making you probably one of the largest in the state? The largest in Minnesota, mm -hmm. by far in Minnesota. And uh, we're looking to grow too. Uh, next year we're looking uh, more towards 50,000. Well, you mentioned other areas maybe not having the same taste or quality as yours. What makes that difference? Uh, it's, it's the soil. The soil and then um, your sugar content is what it is, is a lot higher. See, all, when you have clay and slake and uh, rock, it ain't, ain't good. It, your yield ain't strong. It's just like corn. If you plant your corn in a clay field, it's not going to grow as good as in black dirt. Well, we certainly have that here. Lots it, of black soil. I was admiring that. It's very loose. That's the blackest there is. Tyler, those 3,000 gallon poly tanks, the sap accumulates, and there it is. Yep. Now what happens? Well, what I, usually what we'll do is we'll pick it up with a pump truck. We have a semi, and then we have this old fire engine truck, tanker. Then we use that to pick it up, and that r runs back to our sugar bush. And from there, we process it as fast as we can, or we try to, because the faster you process it, the lighter the syrup you're going to get. And the lighter the syrup, the higher the price you're going to get. Lighter in density or color? Color. Color. They have, a, they have basically mainly, we go on a grade of like, Grade A, light amber, dark amber, grade B, light amber, dark amber. It's, it's, then you have commercial. That's your cheapest one. Um, yeah, but when you get the lighter syrup, you want the grade A light amber. That's the highest price you're gonna get. And obviously that syrup needs cooking and reducing. Yeah, we run it, we run it through an RO, and the RO takes 60% of the water out. Reverse osmosis? Yeah, reverse osmosis. And, what percent uh, comes out? About 60% of the water. 60%? Yep. And after the reverse osmosis takes that much out, what Yeah, happens? the evaporator does the rest. We have a big diesel evaporator, and that does all the cooking, and then that comes to be a finished product. It still has pulp in it, and then we run it through a filter press. Mm -hmm. And the filter press, is, you, know, you mix a mineral in it, looks almost like flour, and what that does is attaches to the pulp, and then it catches it in our filters. And then when it comes out, it's crystal clear. Otherwise, before that, you can't see through it, it just looks really cloudy. How do you get this wonderful product out to the environment, the people that want to use it? Uh, well, uh, we do it online on our website, herringsmaplesyrup.com. You can find it on there. And uh, we also uh, sell in like local farmers markets in the surrounding towns. 
and uh, just by word of mouth and stores, little st few stores around town. Yep. Well, Tyler, thanks for all the hard work you do. All of us with pallets for maple syrup oh, yeah. appreciate it. Oh yeah, you bet, you bet. So thanks for coming out. You're welcome. Appreciate it.